Survivors, Zed Files here. Here we have the Brachiosaurus. Coming from the Ark Editions mod, this herbivorous behemoth is so large that it even makes the Brontosaurus look puny. The Brachy has fantastic health, terrifying combat abilities, and can also harvest all sorts of resources. Is it so powerful that the Bronto has now become completely useless? Well, in this video, I'm going to be doing an in depth comparison on these two creatures, finding the answer to that question in another episode of Ark Creature Comparison. I'll be comparing them through 12 tests and 3 battles, which are sorted into 6 different categories resistance, attacks, mobility, utility, perks, and lastly the battles. So, first I'll be comparing them in the resistance category. And the first test is health. At level 1 base team stats, the Bronto has 1,863 health, and the Brachy has a massive amount of 3,750 health, which is more than two times more than the Bronto. At level 297 max team stats, with both creatures having 32 wild points and 25 team points pumped into health, the Bronto has a little over 32,000 health and the Brachy has a little over 49,500 health, around 1.5 times more than the Bronto. So at low levels, the Brachy has a lot more health than the Bronto, and at higher levels, the Brachy still has a decent amount more than the Bronto. The Brachy wins the health test. The next test is the Saddles test. The Bronto's regular saddle is learnt at level 63, and costs 185 fiber, 350 hide, and 40 metal ingots. The Brachy's regular saddle is learnt at level 70, and costs 235 fiber, 500 hide, and 75 metal ingots. The Bronto also has its platform saddle, which is learnt at level 82. It can be used for building big mobile bases on top of the Bronto's back. The Brachy does not have a platform saddle, since its back is way too slanted to support one. The Bronto wins the saddle test, with its regular saddle being easier to make, and also having the optional platform saddle. The next category that also doubles as a test, is the attacks category. Useless attacks will earn 0 points, okay attacks 1 point, good attacks 2 points, great attacks 3 points, amazing attacks 4 points, and legendary attacks 5 points. So first I'll be comparing them at their level 1 base team stats. The Bronto's first and only attack is its Tail Whip. It does 105 damage. It can attack 0.4 times every second. This means its DPS, damage per second, is only 42. But this attack does have a massive area of effect and knockback, which will prevent its enemies from constantly attacking it. And this attack uses 5 stamina. This is a great attack and earns 3 points. The Brachy's first attack is its Front Stomp. It does 99 damage, it can attack 0.5 times every second, this means its DPS is 49.5, a little higher than the Bronto's DPS. This attack has an okay area of effect, but no knockback, so enemies will be able to stick to and go crazy on the Brachy. This attack uses 30 stamina, this is a good attack and earns 2 points. Brachy's second attack is its back kick. It does 85 damage, it can attack 0.4 times every second, which means its DPS is 34. This attack has an okay area of effect, and does have knockback, unlike its front stomp, so it will be able to prevent its enemies from constantly attacking it. This attack uses 20 stamina. This is a good attack and earns 2 points. The front stomp is better for DPS, while the back kick is better for avoiding damage, because of its knockback. The Brachy's third attack is its Mega Stomp. To use this attack, the Brachy first needs to go into its Bipedal stance. This attack does a massive amount of 2790 damage. It has a startup time of 8 seconds and then a cooldown of 30 seconds, so it can be used every 38 seconds. In PvP, this 8 second startup time allows other players to get out of the way of the Brachy and avoid the Mega Stomp, but they would need to be on a pretty fast mount to do so. In PvE, other creatures aren't smart enough to even try to dodge the Mega Stomp. The Mega Stomp's DPS is 73. Even with such a long wait between uses, the Mega Stomp still has the highest DPS out of all the attacks. 
and also the Brekkie's other attacks can still be used while the Mega Stomp's cooldown is active. So its DPS of 73 can be stacked with the Brekkie's other attacks DPS's. This attack has a massive area of effect and insane knockback. This attack uses 150 stamina. The Mega Stomp is a legendary attack and earns 5 points. The Brachy's fourth attack is its Bellow. It scares away pretty much all creatures in Ark, including UTs, Rexes, and even Gigas. Scared creatures will first poop and then run away, even if they are mounted by players. And they will also take 50% more damage than usual. They'll be scared like this for 25 seconds. The only problem with the creatures running away is that the Brachy itself is really slow, so it won't be able to catch up and attack any of those fleeing creatures. It will just have to let its allies attack them. This attack can be used every 35 seconds and uses 150 stamina. This is a legendary attack and earns 5 points. The Brachy's fifth attack isn't really an attack, it just cycles through resource gathering efficiency, which I'll get back to later on in the utility test. Now going back to the creature's main attacks, the Tail Whip and Front Stomp. At level 1 base team stats, the Brachy's DPS is 7.5 more than the Bronto's, which is 1.18 times more damage. At level 297 max team stats, with both creatures having 27 wild points and 25 team points pumped into damage, the Bronto does 436 damage, which means its DPS is now 174.4, and the Brachy does 453 damage, which means its DPS is now 226.5. This is 52 more than the Bronto, which is 1.3 times more damage. This will be even more when paired with the Mega Stomp. The Brachy when using the Mega Stomp and the Front Stomp together will do more than 2 times more damage than the Bronto. The Brachy wins the attacks test with 14 points, 11 more than the Bronto. The next category is the mobility category. The first two tests that I'll be doing at the same time are the stamina and speed tests. The Bronto has 240 stamina and can run 17 foundations in 12 seconds before running out. This means its speed is 14 foundations per 10 seconds. Super slow. The Brachy has 300 stamina and can run 33 foundations in 20 seconds before running out. So its speed is 16.5 foundations per 10 seconds. It can run for 1.7 times longer than the Bronto and is 1.18 times faster. The Brachy wins both of these tests. The next test is turning. The Bronto's walking and sprinting turning radiuses are both terrible. The Brachy's walking turning radius is meh. Even though it can turn on the spot, it still takes ages to do. The sprinting turning radius is terrible. The Brachy wins this test. The next test is swimming. The Bronto has 150 oxygen and can swim 20 foundations per 10 seconds, somehow faster than its land sprinting speed. And this is also faster than the Brachy's land sprinting speed. The Brachy has 150 oxygen and can't swim very well. Most of the time it will just be able to tread through the water since its legs can reach the ground, but if it's taken into the ocean it will glitch and won't be able to move ever again. The Bronto wins this test. Brachy wins the mobility category with 3 out of 4 tests won. The next category is utility, and the first test is weight. At level 1 base team stats, the Bronto has 1600 weight, and the Brachy has 3000. Almost 2 times more than the Bronto. At level 297 max team stats, with both creatures having 37 wild points and 25 team points pumped into weight, the Bronto has almost 5600 the Brachy has over 10,000. Again, almost two times more than the Bronto. The Brachy wins the weight test. The next test is harvesting. The Bronto is good at harvesting thatch and legendary at harvesting berries. The Brachy is good at harvesting everything. It can cycle between five harvesting modes, meat and hide and thatch and fiber, wood, stone, metal and flint, and berries. 
The Bronto is better than the Brachia at harvesting berries though. If the Brachia is 5 out of 5 stars for all of these resources, the Bronto is 6 out of 5 stars for berries. The Brachia wins this test still, since it's still good at harvesting all those other resources, while the Bronto only has one expertise. The Brachia wins the utility category with both wins. The next category is perks, and the first test in perks is abilities. The points in this test work the same as they did in the attacks test. The Bronto's only passive ability is its trample. When it walks over small creatures, it will do 60 damage per trample. This is an okay ability and earns one point. For some reason, the Brachia doesn't have this ability. Maybe it's more of a gentle giant. The Brachia's only passive ability is its much larger field of view. Much, much larger. The Bronto's field of view is way too small which makes it super difficult to see what's going on around it. The Brachy's field of view is probably the largest out of all the creatures, and when you go into first person, since you ride on the Brachy's head, you can use the Brachy as a lookout tower. Unfortunately, you can't use weapons while up here, but you can use a spyglass. This is a great ability, and earns 3 points. The Brachy wins the abilities test, 2 more points than the Bronto. The next test is bonuses. Both creatures are rideable, neither of them allow rider weaponry. Both of them can be mate boosted, bred, and lay eggs. The Bronto has a feces size of large, and the Brachy has a feces size of massive. The Brachy earns this bonus. The Bronto can damage up to wood structures, and the Brachy can damage up to wood structures with its regular stomp and back kick, and then can damage all the way up to tech structures with its mega stomp. The Brachy earns this bonus and wins this test. The final test before we get into the battles is the taming test. There will be 8 factors to help decide which creature is the winner of this test. The creature that wins is the creature that is easier to tame. The Brachy and Bronto are both uncommon spawns on most parts of the map. The habitat factor is a draw. Both creatures are neutral. The behavior factor is a draw. Both of them are knockout teams, but the Brachy is a unique knockout team. To knock out the Brachy, instead of using Chank Arrows and Darts, you need to attack it, and then wait for it to switch to its Bipedal Stance, and then you have to damage its hind legs. Every part of damage to its hind legs, when it is in its Bipedal Stance, will lead it closer to falling over and becoming unconscious. It's best to go on foot and use a fabricated sniper rifle to deal damage, because if your mount doesn't get out of the rain time for the Mega Stomp, it could easily die. While being on foot, it will be easier to dodge, and you'll also be able to deal a lot of damage from a distance. This whole process is pretty similar to the ordinary knockout process, but it is very easy to accidentally shoot the Raki when it's already falling over, which reduces the taming effectiveness. The Bronto with its easier knockout method wins the taming method factor. The next factor is Torpor. The Torpor can't really be compared that well, since the Raki's knockout method doesn't involve Torpor, in the same way as the Brontos does, so I'll instead compare their Torpor Drain Speeds. The Brontos Drain Speed isn't too bad, but the Brachys is insanely fast. You'll need hundreds, maybe even thousands of narcotics to keep the Brachy unconscious. It eating super slowly doesn't help either. The Bronto wins this factor. As we saw from the speed test, the Brachy is a little bit faster than the Bronto, which will make it harder to keep at a safe distance. The Bronto wins this factor. Neither of the creatures are carryable by flies, this factor is a draw. The Bronto can be immobilized by large bear traps, and the Brachy can't be immobilized by anything. The Bronto wins this factor, since immobilizing it could make it easier to tame. The Bronto eats mejo berries, and its favorite food is exceptional kibble. The Brachy for some reason doesn't like mejo berries, and instead prefers regular berries, like Tinto, Arma, and Azul berries. The Brachy's favourite food is also exceptional kibble. When using berries, the Bronto will require less than the Brachy, but when using the kibble, they both require the same amount. So the diet factor is pretty similar, until you include their eating speeds. The Brachy eats around 2 times slower than the Bronto, making it take way longer to tame. The Bronto wins this factor. The Bronto wins the taming test, with 5 out of 8 factors won, the other 3 being draws. The Brachy wins the perks category with 2 wins. The next and final category is the battles category. 
This will show the creature's unmounted combat capabilities. There will be three battles, the 1v1 battle, the saddle 1v1 battle, and then the mate boosted 4v4 battle. And for all of the battles, the creatures will be at the level 1 base team stats. Now that all of the tests, battles, and categories are finished, it's time for the summary. The Bracky won the health, attacks, speed, stamina, turning, weight, harvesting, abilities, and bonuses tests, so 9 tests, and won all 3 of the battles. The Bronto won the saddles, swimming, and taming tests, so 3 tests. The Bracky, in PvP, with its fantastic health, the insane mega stomp, that can even damage tech structures, and a bunch of other tanks in its arsenal, is one of the most powerful raid creatures in Ark. Far better than the Bronto, and probably even better than the Giga. It's like a mini Titanosaur. In PvE, the Bracky is the best all-in-one harvester. It can harvest pretty much all resources and has tons of weight. The Bracky is a high level player's best friend. Since the Bracky is a very very late game creature, the Bronto is still a great tank for mid-level players. It has tons of health and the decent tower whip attack. For mid and high level players, the Bronto remains the better berry harvester due to the massive area effect on its tail whip attack. And another purpose high level players would still have for the Bronto is that the Bronto can have decently sized bases built on its back. Well, we have now reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like and also make sure to be subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any future creature comparison videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.